I was a banker back in the 90s, fat, dumb, and happy, never, ever imagined doing anything else. I mean, they were paying me stupid money for a college dropout, <laughs> but I was just having success and it was fun. But it wasn't until my bosses started to lean into me to do more. I'm like, I'm doing all I can. Um, but they also wanted me to hire people and train them to do what I'm doing. I'm like, yeah, that sounds great, but I don't even know why I'm successful. <laughs> yeah. How do I put it on paper? I know, right? It's just like, <laughs> lucky? I don't know. You know, uh, again, a lot of how I got to where that point was, is kind of interesting and bumps and nudges and whatnot, but we can talk about that later. But, uh, so I'm like, I need to figure out what it is that's making me successful. So for the first time in my life, in essence, I, I went out to, to study anything. It what, what, trying to find something, you know? So I went out and I, I bought books. I read books, Tom Hopkins, Zig Ziglar, uh, John Maxwell, Bill Backrack, Todd Duncan, you name it. I bought their books. I implemented the things they were teaching. I went to their seminars. I bought their courses and all of it was wonderful. I hired assistants. It made my life easier. I fine-tuned some processes. I made a little bit more money. I went home a little bit earlier, but nothing really gave me that feeling like this is what's me. This is why I'm successful. Um, so it was a little frustrating, but I just continued down that, that path of self-improvement, self-discovery. But it wasn't until I discovered one book that ended up absolutely changing my career and then absolutely changed my career, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yes. So my whole staff knew what I was doing. I was on this path and, 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 and I was growing and I was hiring and I was training and, I was, and it was just, this is just a part of who I am now. But one day I came to work and there was a copy of the book called Guerrilla Marketing on my desk. Now, Guerrilla Marketing, I had never heard of, never ever heard of Jay Conrad Levinson, didn't even know what it was. But Guerrilla Marketing, for those that you don't know, is a book and it was based on um, leveraging your time, your energy, your imagination and relationships to gain conventional goals instead of using money. You're looking for um, serving others, um, obviously creating out of the box thinking, creating real value, memorable things, but not cheesy things. And it's like, I just re really resonated with guerrilla marketing. And so much so that I just immersed myself in guerrilla marketing. I mean, I looked for every book on it. I, if it had the letter G and the M next to it, I bought it, read it, ate it, slept with it, did what it said. I did not really immerse myself in it. And uh, one of the books called guerrilla marketing in the nineties, cause this was the nineties, um, Jay, the author said, Hey, if you have questions, email me <laughs> or let me know, you know, ask me questions. So I emailed them jview at aol.com. And he was, well, that's, that's true. Nineties, nineties. <laughs> that's right. Uh, funny story about how he, no, how he came up with that email address. But anyway, so I emailed him and he responded and we just became pen pals and you know, buddies during, you know, over the email, he answered lots of questions and, and it was just great, but I ended up hiring him as a coach and he didn't necessarily teach me anything more than I had already learned or been doing just because that was my nature, but his story says accountability, the affirmation that this is something and it's called guerrilla marketing and it's definitely very duplicate, duplicatable was incredible. But over the months that he was teaching me, he basically taught me one more thing that I hadn't been doing. And he spread it out over several months because I'm paying him thousands of dollars to be my coach, right? So he's a smart coach. <laughs> but he said, David, basically, if you want to charge more and negotiate less for what you're doing, like, who doesn't? I mean, that's who doesn't want to charge more and negotiate less, right? If you're selling any widget. I'm like, yeah, sign me up. He says, well, you got to keep doing what you're doing because it's working. You're having impact. You're creating relationships. You're adding value. You're serving others. You're helping others. It, you know, you're, you're on your way there, but you need to add one more thing. And I'm like, yes, what is this one more thing? Of course, I'm paying a monthly, so he didn't tell me right away. <laughs> so he went on in another month, kind of similar conversation. He said, David, if you wanted to have those clients that you wished you could do business with, those clients that, you know, that um, uh, that just right now don't know you exist or you're not big enough for them. And you're like, oh, yeah, there were some, I was in real estate, so uh, mortgage banking. And I'm like, yeah, there were celebrity real estate agents that I wish I could get their business from. Even though I was a top producer, I wasn't getting their business. So there were big attorneys who knew where all the money was or CPAs who knew all the big houses kind of thing. I'm like, yeah, I'd like to have that business. Uh, he said, well, you got to keep doing what you're doing to get it because, again, you're adding value. You're creating a relationship. You're creating a name for yourself. You're having impact, yada, yada, yada. He says, but you need to add one more thing. And I'm like. What's just one more thing? Now, you guys can probably go where I'm going. But he dragged it out another month. Same thing. He said, David, if you wanted to have the media call you when something happened in your space. And like, yeah, I, I remember the bobbleheads on television, the, the newspaper articles, the radio stations. You know, I, I, I never saw that as me, but I, I could comprehend that. He said, well, David, if you want to be that guy, you need to keep doing what you're doing because you're having impact, you know, yada, yada, yada. And I'm like ready to scream. And he says, you need, just, you need to add one more thing. And I'm like, Jay, what is this one more thing? And he just blurted out, you need to write a book. 
<laughs> and I, I laughed out loud and cried inside at the same time. I'm like, who am I to write a book? What do I have to say? You know, I, I barely passed high school, definitely barely passed English. I was too busy chasing soccer balls and my now wife of 34 years. And yeah, I just, I even dropped out of college. So I thought it was a 13th grade. I just, it wasn't for me. I'm like, who would I, who would I to write a book? Jay was very loving, very gracious. He helped me realize that that doesn't matter. It's who I am today. It's the message I'm serving. And that, yes, I should write a book and I add value and people need to get to know me. And I'm like, wow, I could do this. And then he helped me with an outline. I ended up writing a book. I did it like 30 days. I wouldn't recommend everybody try to write the book in 30 days, but it worked for me. I, I spent maybe 15 minutes in the evening sitting on the couch with my bride. And I just tapped away at, you know, basically a pre-written outline that uh, Jay helped me with and just knocked the book out. Didn't realize that was a hard thing to do. And then I ended up getting it published. Didn't realize that was a hard thing to do either. Got picked up by a New York house and got paid a little advance and, you know, got the book done. And it worked. In less than eight months, all the things that Jay had said happened. I literally doubled my income. Nobody negotiated my fee with me anymore. Uh, clients that I never could get their attention were begging to get on my calendar. And I swallowed my pride. I took their money, of course, but <laughs> I served them well. Uh, and then sure enough, media called me regularly, weekly. I was either re interviewed on television or radio or in the newspaper every week. And I became you know, that guy. It was like, it was almost laughable, but amazing. My business just grew. Mm -hmm.